what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here in this video i'm going to be kind of doing a more updated video regarding the uh scream trilogy and i kind of just want to explain it all again i've done this before in the past uh, but this is when my channel was very was was much more smaller it's not saying that it's some big ordeal at this point in the game but it's growing uh, i want to thank all of you for that uh, and I actually want to just go ahead and go over the Scream trilogy again and kind of do my best to explain it from a new perspective. Now that I have uh, rewatched the, the original trilogy, I'm going to be explaining the original uh, events that took place, everything that led up to it and where we got uh, towards the end. So just to begin, uh, as we all know, the Scream uh, came out in 1996, revolves around a young teen named Sidney Prescott, who uh, whose mother died a year before the events that occur in the film where a killer is going around town killing everybody and uh, using their love from horror films to taunt their victims. So as we all know, it all also revolves around some of the back history regarding her mother, Maureen Prescott. And I'm kind of just going to go over everything and try to explain that to the best of my abilities. So here we go. Uh, as we all know, well, not as we all know, uh, at some point in the late 60s, uh, early 1970, prior to meeting her future husband, Neil Prescott, a young teenage Woodsboro resident named Maureen Roberts, uh, she had ventured out to Hollywood where she had a short stint as an actress in a few horror films uh, produced by a well-known Hollywood producer in that in this universe uh, named John Milton. Uh, Maureen would essentially go on to be uh, Rena Reynolds while she was in Hollywood. That was her stage name. And Milton would make sure that Rena kept getting her roles by doing dirty work with him and several other peers. These this uh, this dirty work consisted of gang rape and just sex with uh, I'm, I'm guessing several other producers and filmmakers such as such as himself. Uh, one evening, things just got a little bit too out of hand and Rena was raped by Milton and his associates um and then from that Milton is the one who presumably ended up getting uh ended up uh getting Rena Reynolds pregnant at the time which resulted yeah this resulted in her becoming pregnant and having to give birth to a child that she didn't want now the the child that she gave birth to was a was a son she gave birth to a boy Nick, who would go on to be called roman bridger he was born in i want to just go ahead and say he was born in late 1970 and given up for adoption shortly after uh this severe and like just very uncomfortable encounter with john milton in hollywood was enough for marine to drop this acting gig and just move back to woodsboro california uh and then after trying to come clean at some point in time when she was in Hollywood, while she was still in Hollywood, trying to come clean to expose Milton and those who raped her, uh, no charges were ever brought and she was just basically back blacklisted. So sadly, she she just moved back to town, but she never actually recovered from that rape encounter. And Maureen, uh, she she ended up settling down with a very, a very nice man as far as we know, but she did begin to sleep around with other men several years later because she never recovered from that rape encounter in Hollywood. Uh, so after returning to her hometown, uh, Maureen eventually met and settled down with Neil Prescott. The two would then go on to have a daughter named Sydney Prescott, who we all know to be our final girl of the Scream series. Uh, one of my favorite final girls and main characters in a horror franchise. Uh, Sydney Prescott, let's go ahead and say she was born in 1980, 10 years after Roman, uh, Maureen's first child. Um, now, Maureen's life after Sydney was born was turned around for the better. And Sydney was getting the life that uh, that her forgot, forgotten brother, Roman, unfortunately wasn't. Now, elsewhere in Hollywood, because Roman still is growing up in Los Angeles, Roman is growing up in a foster family. And as the years go by, uh, he just starts to begin searching for his birth mother. Now... Roman is also very skilled with a camera and this actually leads him to becoming a Hollywood director. So as a child, he developed some skills with a camera. This ends up leading him into his career as a Hollywood director down the road. Uh, and he he actually comes up with a few ideas, one of them being that he is con he's convinced essentially that his mother is a former Hollywood actress, Rena Reynolds, who he eventually finds out was raped by his future mentor, John Milton. Uh, and then around early 1995, Roman 
tracks Rena down at this point in time. Roman is now 25 at this at this point because remember he was born in 1970. He tracks Rena down in her hometown of Woodsboro and he is excited to meet his birth mother. He wants to be part of her life. He hopes that she will be willing to just let him in with open arms. Sadly though, Roman is not welcome and Rena tells him that she is Marie Prescott and that Rena is dead to her as Roman uh, actually makes mention of this in Scream 3 as he's giving his uh, explanation to Sydney. Maureen told him that Rena is dead and that he is not going to be a part of her life. Now this of course would leave any child uh, devastated, especially a child that was left at the wayside and just forgotten, forgotten because of an event that was out of his control. So uh, for everyone that's on Sydney's side, of course we're all on Sydney's side, but Rome, no justification in what Roman ultimately did, but Roman is, he, he's, he's a victim of this as well in some way, shape, or form. Uh, now, he's obviously going to be brokenhearted over this. All he wants to do is be part of his mother's life. He ends up tracking her down, and she, does, she wants nothing to do with him because that's just a reminder of the past she's trying to forget. Um, this essentially makes him enraged, and he becomes obsessive because he's been obsessing about finding his mother for years. He decides that if she isn't going to allow him to be in her life directly, then maybe he'll just stick around for a bit in Woodsboro and stalk his mother since that's as close as he'll ever get to her in his mind. Uh, so what he essentially is going to do is he decides to use his camera skills and he begins stalking Maureen. He records Maureen as she goes around town. He ends up finding out that he has a sister who is essentially getting the life that he dreamt about for all these years. He learns that Maureen is married and she just completely moved on. She has a whole brand new life, uh, but there's just one problem. From time to time now, as as we all know in what led to everything that went on, Maureen still sleeps around with several men that are not her husband. Uh, so Roman captures her affairs with individuals like Cotton Weary and Hank Loomis, realizing that his mother must have never recovered from, from the incident in Hollywood. He assumes that she is nothing more than a homewrecker. Essentially, I'm, I was going to say another word, but I'm not going to really say that just because of the fact that I don't want YouTube to take this video down. Uh, so he wants to get back at her for this. After just seeing how she just sleeps around town with several different men and how she seems to find that more important than getting to be a part of her son that she forgot. Um, he wants to get back at her for this. Uh, he wants to get back at her for rejecting him and just finding her affairs to be far more important than her son. Uh, and now it's also safe to assume that Roman filmed the personal life of Hank Loomis, one of Marine's lovers a bit as well. Uh, eventually, this affair leads to Hank's wife leaving him because Hank's wife, Mrs. Loomis, she finds out about the affair with Marine and leaves her husband and abandons her son, Billy Loomis, who is also the boyfriend of Sydney at this point. Now, I, I don't really know what happened here with Roman and Billy, how they actually came to meet each other, but he had to have shown or witnessed Billy being frustrated about this whole ordeal and just witnessed him being brokenhearted about his parents splitting up and losing his mother. And then at some point he had to have introduced himself to Billy, possibly came up with a lie about who he was because Billy never makes mention of Roman. He shows Billy footage of Marine sleeping with Hank at a hotel and he now understands, Billy now understands based off of what Roman just did, why his mom left. And now because of this affair, his dad had with his own girlfriend's mom, that's that's essentially what led to his mom leaving him. And to Billy, that's of course going to be devastating to find out that your girlfriend's mother is the reason why your mom left you. That's, that's definitely going to be something that wouldn't sit well with a lot of us. Uh... And Roman essentially is cap capitalizing off of this to enact his revenge on Marine, taking advantage of Billy in his in this emotional state. Uh, after showing him this footage, he takes note that that Billy is uh, clearly very upset and enraged by this, uh, and he convinces Billy to kill Maureen and frame her other lover, Cotton Weary, for it. Uh, he also tells Billy to find a partner as well, just in case he got caught and needed someone to blame along the way. Um, and then Billy following through with the seeds planted by Roman, he successfully kills Marine one night along with his friend, uh, his partner that he decided to go ahead and pick being Stu. Uh, Marine is killed after an encounter with her lover Cotton, her other her other affair. He's framed for the murder for the murder after Billy and Stu staged the scene to make it look like a rape had occurred prior to it. Uh, now, Cotton had actually given given them some ammunition because he mistakenly left his jacket. So Billy used it to smear blood on and he ended up planting it in Cotton's car. Uh, now, one interesting thing that occurred that night was that Sydney did actually witness someone leaving the house wearing the jacket. 
And then when news breaks, uh, she just assumed it was Cotton. And then she testifies against Cotton in court, saying that she saw him leaving the house. When in reality, uh, much do we know that what Gail made mention of in the original film, she didn't see Cotton leaving the house. She saw someone wearing Cotton's jacket and just assumed it was him. Uh, now, after all this is said and done and after Billy kills Maureen, Roman, I'm assuming, leaves town after Maureen is killed. He's satisfied with his revenge plan and he goes back to Hollywood to focus on his career as a director. Now, all the while, Roman has moved on to be a director and pursue his hopes of being some big director in Hollywood uh, and taking his skilled camera work to the next level. Uh, back in Woodsboro, Billy Loomis is continuing to date Sydney, despite knowing what her what her mother did. He has not made any mention of this, the fact that what her mom has done, him killing her mother. Uh, he's still dating Sydney and he is still very angry about what her mom did, which led to him losing his mom and his parents splitting up. Uh, he must have been very close to her to be so heartbroken about it, by the way. Uh, but they're coming up on a year anniversary of the time that he and Stu killed Maureen. And so still heartbroken and still devastated over his parents splitting. He decides to he, he he's not in the right state of mind at all. He he is not in the right state of mind. He decides to go ahead and, and do a full on killing spree in Woodsboro with so much anger and hate in his heart. He decides to just orchestrate a full on killing spree uh, and he forces or convinces Stu pressures him into a, being his accomplice uh along the way just in case he needed to find someone else to frame perhaps uh but th their plan is at the end of this to kill sydney to get revenge he wants to get revenge on sydney for what her mother did because now he's he's wanting to take this out on her and then in the end they're going to just blame it and blame it all on uh sydney's father and cite that his his motive being the anniversary of his of his wife's death is is driven him crazy or something to that to uh, some, something to that effect now uh, all the events in Scream 1, they, that's all summed up if you watch the first Scream. Uh, and then Sydney, Sydney, in the end of that, Sydney kills Stu and Billy and she goes on to college. Now, two years later, after the events of the original film, uh, the events of the first film have been turned into a film that are, that are also, it's also based on a novel titled The Woodsboro Murders. A novel written by a local reporter in the area, Gail Weathers. Uh, the film, based on the events in the first movie, because we all know how Meta Scream is. The film, based on the events that occurred in Woodsboro, is called Stab. And it's produced by none other than John Milton, who had the story about the film, who had the story that the film was based on come across his desk. And John Milton, realizing that he knew this this woman maureen prescott as rena reynolds but never said anything uh he never said anything about that because of the fact that if he had said something that would have made that would have given him bad press uh things could have come out saying how this is all his fault and how none of this probably wouldn't happen if he hadn't done what he had done to maureen when she was an actress in hollywood for that short period of time in her life uh, now elsewhere at windsor college sydney is receiving prank calls due to the film like just having an early showing on campus as we all know that amazing opening of, opening of scream so i think that's one of the best openings to a horror movie ever uh, she's being taunted by yet another ghost face and this ghost face in the end turns out to be mrs loomis who wants revenge on sydney for not only killing her son but for her mother breaking up her family um now, her accomplice in this is a classmate of Sydney. Mrs. Loomis has recruited Mickey, who is already a psychotic killer. Uh, the, the two met online at a psycho website and she convinced Mickey to assist assist her. And they orchestrated Mickey to get into Windsor College. She gave Mickey tuition for this. Uh, Mickey applies, gets in and befriends Sydney. And but the the the, also, the the point the the terrible thing with mickey is he he actually wants to get caught um he wants to blame blame the movies he wants to go to court and blame all of this on the movies uh but little does he know that uh mrs loomis is just going to do as much as she needs to do for him as long as it meets gets her to where she needs to be and then she's planning to to kill and frame him in the end uh she's she ended up actually shooting mickey and she planned to to frame him but as we all know sydney defeats mrs loomis kills her and kills mickey as well disposes of them uh just as she did her son and Stu a year two years prior to that
Now, at this point, Sydney is in fear of another killing spree starting. So she decides to just put herself in seclusion back in California. Uh, and then over the next three years, the Stab series is just growing in popularity. And what ends up happening is we are on the verge of getting yet another entry in the Stab series. It's going to be titled Stab 3 Return to Woodsboro. Uh, this, will once, this, this film is once again going to be produced by John Milton, the director of Stab or it's not the director but it's just going to be produced by john milton uh who whose name is going to continue to come up because he he is a factor in all of this uh now the director of stab three selected is none other than roman roman has been very successful over the years with his directing he's directed several music videos he's even gotten a music video award for it he wants to direct a classic romance comedy i believe that's what he made mention of in screen three but the studio wants him to direct a horror movie for them first and then see how that goes and they'll decide to give him what he wants uh now looking into the series of course to prep uh to prep his role in directing a film that he uh, presumably has no interest in based off of what he wants to do he, he it sounds like roman has no interest in the horror genre so he's had no knowledge of what actually went on after he left woodsboro and everything that he's caused going into research on stab to prepare for the direct for his direction of stab three he learns that the stab series is based on events that he caused he learns that billy and Stu went on to cause went on to just do another killing spree a year later after killing marine he learns about all the press that his half sister is getting from it, Sydney. Uh, he learns about all this stuff that has happened to her as a result of what he caused so many years ago when he convinced Billy and Stu to kill Maureen to get revenge on his mother for his anger at her for feeling like she abandoned him. Uh, now, seeing how successful, not successful rather, but just getting angered by the amount of press and fame that Sydney is getting off of this this angers roman because he's what's upsetting to him is how his whole his whole uh orchestration of having marine killed this hasn't led to her having the worst life imaginable it's actually led to her getting some type of publicity from it and he he is sickened by this um he wants to make a, cor a correction to that error so what he decides to do is that uh after just realizing everything that he's caused indirectly and learning that the stab series is based on events that he is indirectly responsible for and just becoming jealous of the life that sydney once ha that sydney had and everything wishing that it could have been his life she he feels that sydney had the life he deserved and he's just sickened by the fact that uh the it seems like the the opposite effect happened to sydney the death of her mother while yes she still is getting some type of emotional suffering from it she has some type of celebrity status that isn't sitting right with roman he wants her to suffer uh so what he intends to do is track sydney down get revenge on sydney for the life that he feels she stole from him and the mother that he feels sh should have been his that she also stole from him uh he tracks her down in hiding he his his intentions are to start up yet another Ghostface killing spree. He's going to kill off his cast. He's killing off the Stab 3 cast, as we all know if, if you've seen Scream 3. He starts killing off the Stab 3 cast. He essentially is going to be taking them all out. And then in the end, he's going to reveal himself to Sydney and frame her as a psychopath in it all. Him being the sole survivor and the person who uh, confronted Sydney and took her down. Uh, eventually, after tracking her down and after another series of ghost face killings, uh, Roman Roman uh, lures Sydney to Milton's mansion where he reveals himself to her. He explains their history. Sydney finds out she has a brother uh, and how he explains how he basically is the, the reason why her life has been so terrible for these past several years and how he's the reason for everything in regards to what went on in the first film the second film and now he's going to be the concluding chapter of what was originally intended to be a trilogy and he's going to get his ultimate revenge that being killing sydney and making her pay for the life he feels that she stole from him uh that's the scream trilogy in a nutshell as we all know roman did not get his wish sydney ended up defeating her brother uh that that's the scream trilogy for you if you if you guys enjoyed that little summary i just gave I, not little um 
this is probably the longest video i've ever done <laughs> but if you guys enjoyed that summary uh let me know down in the comment section if i missed anything if you haven't already make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts on my facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there to let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future uh if you have, and also if you go ahead and just give this video a thumbs up uh and down in the comment section i'm gonna have a link to the social media or not the social media the facebook group uh that i have you can join that if you want to stay up to date on anything regarding the channel and any uh horror content as well as jeepers creepers 4 updates with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video